Recall these important facts from the AQMD board hearing in February 2019. A two-inch hole could release over a thousand gallons in just a couple minutes. Uh, here, it's called the goldfish test, and this was done in 1986. A single point of release was only 1.65 inches wide, a very small hole about the size of a golf ball. And just with that, 1,000 gallons were released in about two minutes. That's where the figures I mentioned before. It was traveling at the time about 18 feet per second. There was a wind, but you can see it, it's ground hugging uh, and it rapidly expanded. There's unique properties of this acid in terms of its boiling point that even though it's released initially as a liquid, it quickly turns into a cloud. This is actually a picture of the refinery after that explosion in 2015. Uh, and you know, natural disasters can't be predicted, but could, could cause some issues that might lead to a release, as well as an intentional acts have been uh, discussed as well. If it's a natural disaster, you know, the, the, there's already a, a great tax on the emergency response teams dealing with, say, an earthquake. Uh, you know, the hospital uh, rooms are full. Even with the best of intentions, mitigation systems do fail. During the HF release at the Marathon Refinery in Texas, falling equipment broke off two pipes on the HF tank while also damaging the emergency water spray system. During the 2009 Sitgo Refinery release of 42,000 pounds of HF, the water suppression system ran out of water, fighting both the fire and acid. Mitigation measures failed in the Union Carbide, Bhopal disaster, and the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Accidents happen. Maintenance has historically been low priority in the refining industry. His team counts about 500 accidents in the last 20 years, but that's likely an underestimate. But by and large, the philosophy in the refining industry is push it until it breaks. But are the rules strong enough? Absolutely not. Why? Why isn't uh, it being done? Why is it, uh, the oil industry doesn't want it. They have been able to significantly uh, influence the uh, progress on safeguarding the public. Consider these health and safety hazards during a hydrofluoric acid release. It is uniquely hazardous to health. It is not just an acid that burns, but it does, once it gets on your skin, it does penetrate into your, into your body and actually uh, attacks your bone structure. Here's just some pictures here. It does require immediate treatment and it does require specialized treatment. My name is Dorothy Moore, and I'm a physician with 10 years of ER experience. And I urge you to keep in mind the University of Texas emergency preparedness presentation that was held in September. Remember, they practice for the worst reasonable scenario. He mentioned 500 patients would overwhelm his hospital, and there's a limitation on the number of burn and ICU beds, not to mention the national shortage of calcium gluconate. Locally, there's only enough for 40 patients they calculated at that time. Even if you survive, there's permanent scarring. I told you about the difficulty determining actual exposure versus asthmatic or the worried well with such insidious initial symptoms of cough and a sore throat. When time is of the essence for treatment, this is a triage nightmare. According to the Los Angeles County Health Department, field tests and experience from other major chemical incidents suggest that evacuation zones in response to an MHF release could extend up to 10 miles from the refinery. This equates to potentially millions of people at risk. My name is Katie Butler. I'm representing the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. I'm a board certified toxicologist with over 10 years of experience in health risk assessment and risk management. We support the fundamental principles of the proposed approach that enhanced mitigation and phase out of modified hydrofluoric acid is called for. We encourage the district to take a path forward that requires modified hydrofluoric acid to be phased out as soon as possible. In 1991, the AQMD said itself in Rule 1410, while engineering measures can be undertaken to reduce the probability of an accidental release, they cannot eliminate the possibility of a major accident. 
Elimination is the only 100% fail-safe measure to protect the community.